A new album from Pearl Jam always prompts the question, is it as good as 10 or Versus or early Pearl Jam? It also prompts the statement, the best album since, insert your own preference here. But is this Pearl Jam album, Dark Matter, ultimately any good? Let's find out on Scott Reviews Things. again and welcome back to Scott Reviews Things. Hope you're all doing really, really well. It's Wednesday the 24th of April and last week Pearl Jam, the sole survivors of the 90s grunge major grunge scene, um, have released their 12th studio album Dark Matter uh, into record, LP, vinyl, LPs and vinyls, vinyls, CDs, Dad downloads and all that sort of stuff. Uh, last Friday, the 19th of April. Uh, I was going to do a whole video on just reacting and respond. Well, that'd be a good song, like react and respond. Um, to the new album. But I thought what I'm going to do is... I've been listening to it for a week, almost. In the past, I've been very quick to react and respond uh, to Pearl Jam stuff and to new music. Some favourably, and not some not so favourably. So this time, I thought I'd do something different, and I'll take my time before making my mind up about whether I actually like this album. Spend a bit of time with it, and I could come and speak to you guys on my feelings. I'm not a musical expert or anything like that, but I could tell you, if, being a Pearl Jam fan since 1991, I could tell you if I like the album or not. So, new Pearl Jam album, Dark Matter. Their last album was Gigaton. Um, that was released just before the world went to shit in 2020. So, they had to postpone their world tour. Um, and probably a lot of the Gigaton stuff got lost because of what was going on in the world. Um, didn't think Gigaton was their finest album. Uh, but I didn't think it was their worst either. And at the time, it was their first album for the, for seven years. So good songs on Gigaton, whoever said. Absolutely love Super Blood Wolf Moon. Um, we had the, the slightly um, different Propel Jam, uh, Dance of the Clairvoyance. Loved the outro track, um, River Cross. There were some really good songs on there, but I just I think ultimately it, it just lacked a little bit for me. Uh, so here we are four years later with brand new music. And considering we're 33 years into Pearl Jam, I think that's a good thing. Um, is it any good? Dive a little bit deeper and see what we think. This album release has really seen an unusually high, from my point of view, band and media attention. Uh, the band have been calling it their best music they've ever made. That's a hell of a statement. And the media are calling it the return to form. Uh, whatever that means. <laughs> don't really know what it means. First off, let's get one thing straight. The angry, grungy, um, fuck the world 20-somethings, they're long gone, uh, those people, and they've been replaced by contented millionaires, and the music largely mirrors that stage in life, and it has done for many years. Replaced, uh, sorry, uh, so if you're expecting 10, but 30 years later, or versus redone, uh, you're going to be really disappointed, as I think you want, will be for the last five or six albums, or any album that have come since 10 and versus. What we have now is a band of guys um, that know how to make good stadium rock music. Uh, tend to be better live than on CD or download, I think. I think sometimes their songs actually transfer better to a live audience. Um, we'll get into the mix of this album at some point, no doubt. Um, but yeah, but as a near 50 year old man, I'm just content knowing that Pearl Jam are still making music and it's still pretty bloody good after all these years. And at this time in my life, do you know what? 
I'll probably take that. So what do the, the songs sound like on Dark Matter? Recorded over apparently a three week period last year with Andrew Watt, who's produced um, the Rolling Stones and Oz, Ozzy Osbourne to name a couple. And he also produced Eddie Vedder's um, last solo album, Earthling, which I think was a really, really good album. Uh, the album has been described as having a more live feel to it. So this time around, the members are actually all in the studio together, recording at the same time, adding bits and sort of as as a band. Whereas apparently they haven't done that for for for, for many many years. Which e even as someone who can play a little bit of guitar, um, finds it astonishing that a band would record like that. I don't know if that's how other bands record, um, but yeah, it seems to that this seems. Uh, a more raw approach to it and I, I think that comes across in the in the music i think it's um it's certainly got a slightly more live feel to it uh the songs are written in quick smart time and i actually think that the album benefits from that i know in, in previous albums that uh, it's taken years for these songs to gestate whereas over a three week period they've just got in got it done and I think that's a good thing. Um, I've seen a lot of criticism from the mixing. Read a lot of um, people's thoughts on this over the last week, and uh, people are complaining about the mixing. I'm not qualified to react to that. I'm not a musician. I'm not a. Um, I'm not a, a, a producer. I'm not a, a mixer of any sort of sort of that. I can just tell you if I like the song, uh, the quality of the song, and the feels of the song, and whether they feel like Pearl Jam songs. Um, and I think that's just the fairest way of going about it. So Dark Matter is Pearl Jam's 12th album. It has 11 songs on it, and it comes in at 48 minutes, if you didn't know. The track listing, number one, Scared of Fear. Number two, React Respond. Number three, Wreckage. Number four, Dark Matter. Number five, Won't Tell. Number six, Upper Hand. Number seven, Waiting for Stevie. Uh, number nine, Running. Number uh, sorry, eight is running. Number nine, something special. Uh, number ten got to give, and number eleven, setting sun. So let's have a dive into the actual songs themselves, and if I like them, what I don't like about them, um, those sort of things. If you're interested, so number one, scared of fear. The album opens like a lot of our uh, a lot of Pearl Jam albums. Certainly, um, ten uh, verses, Vitalogy, and even. Uh, the last one, Gigs Tom, with some ambient uh, music going on in the background, spatial sounds. Uh, and I actually quite like that. And then we're hit, literally, with a the sound of pool balls crashing together and we're bursting into Scared of Fear. Uh, for this, for me, this song's very reminiscent of whoever said the album opener for Gigaton, um, but a slightly less wordy version of that um absolutely cracking riff from stone like an earworm that gets into your head um and there's an absolute shred of um a a guitar lick from from mike mccready who we hear an absolute shitload of in this album it's very mike forward and it, it it's all the better for it and eddie's vocals come through really really well um scared of fear for me a very solid opener really enjoyed it um and heard it uh live on howard stern and i thought it was really good it's gonna come across i think it's one of those ones that's gonna transfer really well to their live set that takes us into uh number two react respond which is the opening one two punch continues with a blast of pearl jam rock um punk rock style uh, for me it's quite reminiscent of Breaker Fall from Binaural. I don't know if anybody else agrees with that. It's just what I took from it. Uh, it took me a few listens to actually get into this one. I um, actually heard a live version on Howard Stern. Was that, one, that one's on Howard Stern, was it? Scared of Fear. Can't remember. Um, energy is really good on this one. N nice dueling guitars going on through the song um between uh, mike and stone and also got a slight sort of chili peppers vibe from it i thought it was um for, took me a little while to get into react respond but i actually really like it now it's uh it's a, for me it was a real grow it's not the the longest song it's about three minutes 30 seconds but put together with scared of fear to begin with i think it's a great couple of songs to open the album 
Number three, we're going to Wreckage. And that got released last week as one of the singles. I did a reaction video when it first dropped. And my thoughts haven't really changed. Um, I've seen some people absolutely hate this song. I've seen people absolutely love this song. For me, it's what Pearl Jam actually do quite well, which is a jangly Pearl Jam mid-tempo rock ballad. And I think some um, songs Pearl Jam have always done really, really well. It's quite Tom Petty-esque. Um, would And I don't think this one would feel out of place on older Pearl Jam albums. Um, Wreckage is a, a really good song. It, it it brings us down a little bit from the first two songs, um, which Pearl Jam do quite well. They sort of set off on a pace, they bring us down ever so slightly, and then they start marching us back up again to bring us down at the end. And I think Wreckage sits quite well within that, and it does a really nice job. It's got a nice feel to it. Eddie's um, vocals are really good. I have seen people actually hate this song, each to their own. And then we're into Dark Matter, the um, the title track from the the album. I'm not going to say a lot about, uh, I'm not going to delve too much into Dark Matter. We've all heard it. It's been around for five or six weeks weeks now. Um, you either love it or you like it. I actually quite like it. Um, it's dark, it's dingy, it's grungy. Uh, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's bass line really shines in this for me, and the drums drive the song. Uh, sadly, I do think... Although Matt's drums drive it, they get lost a little bit in the mix, and I can understand why where people have said that. Um, but Dark Matter, the song, it doesn't actually suffer um, this fate as much as other songs do. But for me, Dark Matter, a pretty solid um, first single, and I think it's going to sound really good live as well. Next, we're on to num uh, number, f uh, was it number five, Won't Tell. Uh, when I first heard won't tell it was a the first real surprise from the album for me um pearl jam meet the cure meets um a little bit of u2 as well for me and i have to say i absolutely love this song um for me it's the one i've played the most won't tell it's probably the least pearl jam sounding song on the album for me um from what i've seen it's a jeff Amon song he had a dream and he's gone in the next day with his bass line or something and he's written this song and it's fantastic it really is easily one of pearl jam's catchiest songs they've written in ages uh some will absolutely hate it i think it's got a great chorus it's got a great bass line eddie sounds fantastic in this song one of the best latter-day pearl jam songs that, Pearl, that they've released and recorded for me. It's fabulous. Really, really, I can't recommend Won't Tell highly enough. And then we're on to Upper Hand. Um, again, we're greeted by a, a U2-esque intro, which isn't, I'm not a massive fan of U2, but it, it serves this song quite well. The song appears to be about death, from what I can read. Um, I follow this under a slow burner. I heard it. I didn't like it. Um, it just wasn't for me. And there's been a few songs over the years that people have absolutely raved about. Severed Hand, um, Sleight of Hand, and obviously we've got Upper Hand now, the Trilogy Hands. Um, I wasn't over keen on those songs, and a couple of those songs are still not. Um, this one has grown on me um, since I first heard it. And, and the more I've listened to it, the more it's grown on me. What I do like is the steady build of this song Start, starts out quite slowly and it builds and builds and builds to a triumphant almost stomping finish um which i think is superb this song is going to sound immense live um, i have no doubt about that for me mike and matt stand out superbly on a band it is a for, it has grown on me and it is a really really good song and then we get to Waiting for Stevie. Uh, <laughs> where do I start with Waiting for Stevie? Mammoth doesn't do this song justice. Uh, a sort of cross between, 90, for me, 90s Oasis meets Breath from Pearl Jam, 1991-92. Uh, huge thick bass, 
massive riff. You want drums. Here are the fucking drums. And Eddie singing his fucking heart out. Um, it's a tremendous song. I mean, for me, Won't Tell and Waiting for Stevie, the absolute standouts on this album. Uh, two very different songs. This is glorious. It's a fucking masterpiece of a song for me. If ever a modern day era Pearl Jam song harks back to the 10 versus Vitalogy era, it's Waiting for Stevie. It's an absolutely tremendous song. Apparently, it was written while Eddie and Andrew Watt were waiting for Stevie Wonder to arrive to record for Eddie's solo album, Earthling. Uh, but it's not about that. Um, reading the lyrics, it seems to be about some sort of... Uh, it's about love. It's a love song, ultimately. Um, but it's, it's, it's fucking glorious. It's uh, an incredible, an incredible song. And this song... Is going to, I've said this on a couple of them, this song live is going to be monumental. It's going to be fantastic. If you haven't heard Waiting for Stevie, even if you don't like Pearl Jam, pump it into Apple, into Spotify, into YouTube, wherever, wherever you're going to listen to your music and listen to Waiting for Stevie. It's fucking brilliant. Then we come to Running, Running with the second single off the album. Um, I'm not gonna delve too deep into this one either. Done a little, I did a reaction video to this. Um, after the glorious waiting for Stevie, we we, can, we do get running. I've covered this in another video. It sounds like a very Eddie Vedder song, a little bit more punk, Pearl Jam punk. Um, again, Jeff absolutely nails this. Sanely catchy chorus and melodies, reckless and chaotic. Eddie's lyrics aren't the best in running, but. For me, it's just a little bit of fun and I don't have a massive problem with it. Coming on to uh, number nine, which is something special. Nothing to do with Mr. Tumble. Uh, if you know, you know. For me, my least favourite song on the album. And it's obviously a very personal song from Eddie to his two daughters. Uh, Eddie's love and pride and admiration for his daughters shines through. Sort of reminds me a little bit of Seeping By Myself from Lightning Bolt, which I thought was a nice song. It's not bad. Just for me, it's the most skippable song on the album. Then we get to number 10, and we're getting to the end of the album now. And we come to Got To Give. Opens with a, a lovely organ-style interlude after um, something special, before these huge drums and the song kicks in proper. Heading towards the end of the album, this is a cracking tune. It really is really good. Eddie's singing about being the last one standing uh, in the lyrics it is really poetic when you know the history of the Seattle and grunge scene of the late 90s as he is the last man standing. Uh, an unapologetic um, rock anthem is this one. And only slightly ruined for me by muddy drums on the track and which slightly lets it down for me this is also has a slight who vibe about it i don't know if you guys agree but what it does do is it sets up the album closer really really nicely but i like got to give i think it's a really really good song and that brings us to setting some the album closer this one's got a little bit of all those yesterdays um going on for me uh, which isn't a bad thing. Interestingly, the first song on the album, Scared of Fear, has almost the same lyric in it. So in Scared of Fear, it says, is this what we become, one last setting sun? And in Setting Sun, it says, we can become one less, one last setting sun. So almost bookend in the album with this setting sun um, sort of vibe. And I think it's really nice. Pearl Jam always close their albums out with in this style. Uh, while for me, not as I liked, loved River Cross from Gigaton. Um, I don't think it's as good as Giga, um, River Cross, but I do like this song. Another one that really sort of builds towards its end. And I like the Pearl Jam songs that have done that, and they've done that well on this album. Eddie sings about Let's Not Fade Away. And I hope that's true. Let's hope that Pearl Jam don't fade away. 
because on the strength of Dark Matter, the album in general, they've surely got one more, at least, album in them for me. So where does this sit in the anth anthology of Pearl Jam, the discography? Um, well, it's their best album since, well, the last one that you thought was great. Um, it's not a return to 10 or Versus or Vitalogy. That era of Pearl Jam is 30 years ago and it's never going to return. What it is, for me, is 60-year-old men making fucking great music. And do you know what? As an almost 50-year-old man, I'll take that. A solid thumbs up from me. But what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment. What's your favourite song? What are the things you like about the album? What do you dislike about the album? For me, I'm going to give it a solid thumbs up. I think it's a decent album. It's better than Gigaton. Um, I'll have to go back and have a look through the album. I know there's lots of these ranking and tier system things going on in groups at the moment uh, where there, people are ranking. I've already done a ranking video for, for my Pearl Jam albums. Maybe this one, I'll do another one and we'll sit this in there. But it's not the worst album. There's some tremendous songs. Waiting for Stevie, Won't Tell, two cracking songs. But what do you think? Um, if you don't like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. That's entirely up to you. There's a subscribe button. There's going to be some more Pearl Jam co content coming at some point. If you like this video, uh, do all that bo bollocks. And um, yeah, leave a comment and I'll see you very soon. Thank <laughs> you.